Hey guys, what's poppin'? My name is Blue Ink, and welcome back to the Blue Green Incorporated Zoo. This is the fifth episode of my Planet Zoo speed building series, and in this episode I am working on a bison and pronghorn habitat. Now as you might be able to tell from the video in this episode, or for this habitat, I wanted to add some height variation to the zoo because it's very flat and I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting to the eye. But uh, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I tried adding a mountain and a little hill with a cave in it and all sorts of different things and it just really wasn't working out. So I just settled on having this little raised area with a little path a little bit higher up because bison and pronghorn do tend to prefer flatland areas. So. And they have a flatland, it's just flatland that's a little bit higher up than the rest of the zoo. At this point in the video, I am working on a barn to house both the bison and the pronghorn because they needed hard shelter and they don't really stay in caves, so I decided to make a barn. So I enjoy building this barn, I think it looks really good, it fits in with the theme. It's a little bit dark, like I wish there was a lighter wood color that wasn't the horizontal planks, because the horizontal planks are really bright. So I just wish there was one like the vertical planks that was just a little bit lighter. And no, I don't have the DLC. So and maybe I'll maybe I'll get the DLC. I don't know. I'll think about it. Anyway, so I put a path going around just uh, to work as viewing as the viewing point for guests. And I think it's a good viewing point. I ended up putting uh, rock work to um keep the animals from escaping because they could actually just walk right up that ridge. So I had to put yeah, I had to put in rock work to keep them from doing that. And even after I put in the rock work, the baby pronghorn were still still able to just walk right up it. So I had to adjust it a little bit. But here you can see I'm adding in some runs just to make it look like the ground is well traveled. I tried to make it look kind of like it was like sandy grass, like kind of like in Grasslands, the grass is usually a little bit more yellow or brown than the grass is typically in the game. Oh, here I'm adding in the animals. So yeah, I bought as many animals as can go in a group and still have the animals be happy for their social group as far as the game's concerned, and put them into the habitat. So yeah, there's a lot of animals in this habitat. <laughs> But I kind of like that decision. According to the their requirements, their like technical requirements, they only need like 3,000 square meters of space for that. That's ridiculous. This is this one is this is 9,000 square meters, and they're still in very close proximity all the time. So if it was 2,000, I can't even like imagine how horrible that would be. That sound that seems almost inhumane. You will see here in a moment I added in a little trickling brook water fountain fall thing, whatever you want to call it, and uh, in order to make it so small like that, because the only water effects we have for waterfalls are like super huge, so in order to make it small, I used the water jet fountain, whatever they're called, and I sunk them really far into the ground. <laughs> And I used a lot of them. So there are a lot of water effect particle things um, hidden really far under the ground. But I think it worked out really well and that's a trick I learned from the wonderful Mike Sheets who I have mentioned in previous videos. Well, a previous video. Now without any further ado, let's talk a little bit about the animals. So the American bison, scientific name bison bison, or if you want to include subspecies, bison bison bison, no, I'm not joking, uh, is a mammal, an undulate. Its conservation status is near threatened, but it has a stable population. And groups of bison are called herds, as most of you probably know. Um, the population is about 11,000 to 1,300 mature individuals. They have a lifespan of 12 to 20 years. Um, as far as size goes, they can be up to 7 feet tall at the sole shoulder. 7 feet tall at the shoulder. Uh, 7 to 11 feet long. 
and they can weigh about 900 to 2,000 pounds, which is gigantic. So their habitat is generally in North America. They live in shrublands, savannas, deserts, wetlands, inland wetlands, grasslands, and forests. Females are called cows, males are called bulls, and babies are called calves. Now, as far as their herd life goes, cow and bull bison live in small separate groups that will join together as a large herd during summer mating season. And during that season, males fight for mating primacy, but the fights that they have are rarely dangerous. And uh, female, females will give birth to a single calf after a nine month pregnancy. So when bison communicate with each other, you can tell a lot by their tail position. If it's down, they're calm, and if it's up, they're really mad. So bulls will bellow during mating season, and cows and calves will usually just make pig-like grunts. That's about it. So fun facts about bison, they're the largest land mammal in North America. Bison are often mistakenly called buffalo, as that's probably what many of you think that they're called, but they're actually bison, they're not buffalo, and they have nothing to do with buffalo. Uh, Yellowstone National Park is the only place bison are believed to have continuously lived since prehistoric times. Bison calves are often referred to as red dogs because they're born with orange reddish colored coats. Bison are a major part of Native American culture, as, probably, as a lot of you probably already know. The, inter the Intertribal Buffalo Council works with the National Park Service to transfer bison from national park lands to tribal lands. Bison can run up to 35 miles per hour, and they are extremely agile. They can spin around quickly, jump high fences, and are very strong swimmers. Bison will forage between, for between 9 to 11 hours a day, and the shoulder hump they have allows them to swing their heads from side to side to clear snow, creating foraging patches. Theodore Roosevelt formed the American Bison Society in 1905 and helped save bison from extinction. Bison are very nearsighted, they really can't see very well. And finally, bison roll in the dirt to deter flies and shed fur. This is called wallowing, and bulls will wallow during mating season to leave behind their scent and display their strength. Now moving on, oh my gosh, that's a lot of animals in that habitat. Uh, yeah, I bought enough animals to fill their maximum uh, number of animals in a group as far as the zoopedia is concerned. So yeah, there's a lot of animals in that habitat. Now let's talk about the pronghorn antelope, or its scientific name, Antilocapra americana. Conservation status is least concerned, and it has a stable population of about 700,000, 750,000 mature individuals. It is also an undulate mammal, herbivore. Its lifespan is 10 to 15 years in the wild, and groups are called herds or bands. They can be 31 to 35 inches tall at the shoulder, 4.2 to 4.6 long. I think that's what I wrote. I can't really read my notes sometimes. Sorry about that. And they can be 87 to 130 pounds. Their habitat is in North America, the western and central regions of North America, and they can generally be found in grasslands and deserts. And actually, when they're in deserts, they will eat cactus, which is kind of cool. Males are called bucks, females are called does, babies are called fawns. So large herds can have up to a thousand individuals in it during fall and winter, and in fall and winter, bucks, different bucks within that herd will gather harems and protect them. Females will generally decide which males they want to breed with, and they will spend a few days with each buck uh, and assess their fitness. Fawns are born in the spring, and fawns born in the same litter often have different fathers, which is a little weird. Now, fawns can walk just 30 minutes after birth, and can outrun humans after four days, and outrun horses after a week. So, you know, th that's normal. 
Now, as far as communication goes, they'll alert danger, alert others to danger by snorting and stamping. Males may snort, chug, and wheeze during breeding season, and they will growl, roar, and smack their lips at regular intervals. Mothers bleat to call their young, and fawns will use a loud bleat if they're in danger. Scent is also a very important part of communication when it comes to pronghorn antelope. Males have nine scent glands and does have six. Fun facts about the pronghorn antelope. They have a top speed of 53 miles per hour, that's 86 kilometers per hour, which is not much slower than the cheetah, although they can run for much longer periods of time than the cheetah can. Now pronghorns are not very good jumpers and they'll often go under fences instead of around them. They have very large eyes and I think something I read said they can see 320 degree radius. Now pronghorn horns are like horns and antlers combined. True horns are compressed keratin that grows from a bony core and uh, never shed. True antlers are made of bone and shed each year. Pronghorn, ant uh, pronghorn horns are made of keratin but shed each year. Uh, the plural of pronghorn is pronghorn, and pronghorns sleep for less than 10 minutes at a time. Lewis and Clark were the first to scientifically document pronghorn antelope, and pronghorn antelope can eat plants that are toxic to domesticated animals. So at this point, I'm just adding in some fencing to keep people from throwing themselves face first into the habitat. I added in a staff building that kind of matches the theme of the other staff building I have in the wolf and African wild dog enclosure. And uh, that's about it. I did go in off camera and add in some lupin or wisteria, it's just upside down wisteria, to uh, add a little bit of color variation to the habitat. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch some of my videos in the future. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!